If the left's logic was correct, there would be millions of people dead in the streets every day in America, because tens of millions of Americans in every state are licensed to carry firearms in defense of their lives, their families' lives, and their fellow citizens' lives. But it turns out Americans with licenses to carry permits are the most statistically law-abiding group in the entire country. It's almost as if our natural God-given freedom isn't such a bad idea. Hmm. The concealed carry movement in the United States really is the political success story for the people, the best that I've ever been aware of. So we've seen concealed carry laws come to fruition in all 50 states now. And Florida really started that. Crime was high. Politicians were realizing that the government couldn't take care of the individual citizens. Do you have control over the entire area or not? No, in some sections of Miami, we do not. We're not able to, uh, to respond to some fires, depending on the area. We've sent fire units in, accompanied by police officers, and they've had to withdraw because of sniper fire and other acts of violence directed to them. And the one thing they determined they could do without spending a lot of taxpayer dollars is to empower the people to take their self-defense into their own hands. I'm, I've got a little boy, I'm going to protect him. I'm going to protect my property. I never did anything to them people. They don't have no right coming in here and doing something to me. In the 80s, Florida was the state that went shall issue and set the trend that just swept the country. In a shall issue state, the burden is put on the state. Unless the applicant has something in his criminal record that should prevent him from having a gun, they have to issue the permit. When they got ready to do that, everybody warned, blood in the streets, blood in the streets, it's gonna be the wild, wild west. Guess what? No, what happened is tourists felt safe again to go to the rest area. Fast forward to a couple of years ago when Illinois is the 50th state to adopt concealed carry. And precisely the same thing was predicted by the governor. Our state was told by a federal court that we must adopt a law dealing with concealed carry. I felt that ruling was wrong then. I still feel it's wrong. It's not been appealed. Uh, we therefore have to take action to protect the public safety of the people of Illinois. At every turn in the road, they use the same argument, saying that law-abiding citizens should be unarmed because if we allow them to be armed in this manner, there's going to be needless bloodshed. And it doesn't happen. Do you have evidence of this? Because it is not out there. When the first concealed carry permit was issued here on December 18th, 2013, there were predictions that Illinois would turn into the Wild West. That, of course, hasn't happened. I trust law-abiding citizens. I trust law-abiding citizens with firearms. Hoosiers not only arming themselves in big numbers, but they also want to carry their firearms with them in public. And with the growing number of people with guns, there's also growing concern they might get into the hands of people who shouldn't possess a weapon. Texas now has 580,000 permit holders. This is back in 2012. 120 were convicted of misdemeanors and felonies. Very few of those actually involved guns. If you could imagine a city of 580, 600,000 people and only 120 people getting arrested, it would be the safest single jurisdiction in the world. The campus carry bill was approved a few months ago by the Texas legislature. Here Nearly 400 UT Austin professors us. have joined a protest group called Gun Free UT. When campus carry became more popular, people were going to start shooting each other uh, over their grades. The issue is not so much somebody coming into the classroom from the outside. It's rather a student in the classroom or more likely a student in my office who's upset about a grade and who pulls a gun on me. When I talk to students, um, if I told them that, hey, you have to be 21 years of age and older and you have to pass a mental health background check and a criminal background check and all these restrictions um, that come with concealed carry, um, most of them would come around and be very open to campus carry. The opposition to campus carry stems from the touching belief that if you put up a sign, then somebody who is uh, hell-bent on hurting other people uh, will reconsider. Studies have shown that our generation is 7% less likely to support gun control than the previous generation. We're starting to understand more and more the importance of, of self-reliance and independence. We have more guns in this country than we've ever had in the history of this country. Yet crime is at a downward trend. Today in every state, there is some means by which you can keep and bear concealed arms. That's a trend. 
that's the Constitution growing as we come to the understanding that the Second Amendment is not a dead letter. On the flip side, look at a state like California. California is passing laws on storage in different cities. They're passing statewide bans. They've instituted them now on high capacity magazines. They're expanding the assault weapons ban. I wrote recently, California is the hardest state in the union for a law abiding citizen to acquire a gun, much less carry one. Frankly, you do not need a weapon to buy a cheeseburger or a cup of coffee. You need an ATM card or a $5 bill. The only reason the person would openly carry a firearm is to use it or to make people believe they would use it. And to me, this is an act of intimidation. Well, I'm not a carry holder myself because I live in Los Angeles County. I am a retired army infantry colonel who commanded the battalion and deputy command at the brigade level. I am a graduate of the Army War College. I have been in Operation Desert Storm and Operation Enduring Freedom in Kosovo. I'm not a concealed carry holder here in Los Angeles because apparently no one is qualified to be one. In Washington, D.C., in order to get a concealed carry license, you have to show that there is a specific ongoing threat against your life, and you have to provide documentation. You can't have the kind of general danger. You have to have a specific reason. You need to prove it. When you have to prove that your life's in danger, your family or your property, or you have the type of business where you carry large sums of money, cash, or jewelry, and under those circumstances, that's why you can have a concealed carry in the district of the moment. The Second Amendment right to bear arms just doesn't fully apply here? Uh, well, this, uh, I believe when the Second Amendment was written, that was more or less for uh, what you know, when the British were coming. And then once you've done that, once you've demonstrated to the government that, look, here is somebody who is actively threatening me, DC says, well, we'll get back to you in a month and let you know if you can get your concealed carry license. That's ridiculous. It is so ridiculous that it took me four months, a five hour course, a written test, hundreds of dollars in fees to have a gun in my home to protect myself. When I could cross the river to Virginia, which is a mile away, and go through a 15 minutes NICS check to make sure that I'm not a felon and not a wife abuser, not a drug addict, and have a gun in my home to protect myself. Your gun rights should not be subject to any arbitrary geographical boundaries. I certainly know from experience that violent crime occurs at a moment when you never expect it. In 2009, my husband, Benjamin, was murdered right in front of me by a man who was stalking me. Police say this all started around 10.30 here at Johnny's off Nolansville Pike. Police say the bar was hosting a karaoke night when an irate customer came in and started harassing the couple who runs the karaoke machine business. Police say the man has harassed the same couple at different bars across the area in the past. When management approached him, he pulled out a gun and shot the man who was in a karaoke booth several times. The man did die inside the bar. This happened in a gun-free zone, a restaurant. And because of Tennessee state law at the time, I had to leave my permitted firearm that I normally carried for self-defense locked in my vehicle that night. Of course, my stalker, who did not have a handgun carry permit, who was carrying a gun illegally, brought that gun in and shot Ben six times in front of myself and everyone in the middle of the restaurant. And I'll probably wonder for the rest of my life if I could have prevented that, of course, I'll never know because I was denied a chance. A uh, gun-free zone uh, is really a, a ridiculous uh, thing to claim given that the people you want to stop, uh, the person with murder in his heart, uh, doesn't care whether he's breaking the law or not. I don't personally believe that carrying a gun makes me invincible. But what I do believe is that it gives me at least a fighting chance. Right to carry is not just the God-given natural right of the people. With millions of Americans in every state signing up for permits, it is the will of the people. But some states don't care about the rights or the will of the people. States like California and New York, where the poor, vulnerable, unprotected average citizens must beg at the feet of their government for their right to defend themselves and almost never get permission, while the wealthy, the powerful, and the connected have all the freedom they want. That's what equality and justice looks like in an anti-gun utopia.